Jude Bellingham for 130 million pounds and Todd Bowley's dropping game on him already. But there are two clubs ahead of Chelsea. I've got the names for you. Declan Rice linked with Chelsea again. Nkuku once again linked thanks to Matt Law. This is a very interesting article and we're going to break down. Oh yeah, and one more thing. Mendy, it looks like your time is up at Chelsea. Welcome to the Gaff Guys, you guys. Yes, I'm later than usual, but this might become the normal time for going forward. So stay tuned and make sure you have that bell notification on to know when I'm posting and hit the like button now because a lot of you are not hitting it and we're aiming for 500 and subscribe as well if you're new but this is what we're covering we're going to cover the Matt Law article that came out with his insight news on Bryce Bellingham and Cuckoo and Mendy and then we're going to talk about the new news coming out the three countries that Todd Bowley is trying to buy football clubs to associate them with Chelsea and they're great countries countries that produce great talent and are known for their systems of producing great youth that turn into great footballers. So let's get into this video without further ado. So Matt Law is in the know, Mr. ITK himself. Look, when it comes to Matt Law, this guy gets fed information like my mom used to feed me food when I was younger. Brother, get that spoon and fed in his mouth and I had to regurgitate it. I like this food and he has to say, I like this information, I'm gonna get it out. So if he doesn't, he just doesn't get it in the future. I would get smacked. But I love you, mom. We all know that. All jokes aside, when it comes to Jude Bellingham, he's saying there are two clubs ahead of Chelsea, but Todd Bowley and the Clark Clarkway group are actively dropping game on him. They're taking his camp out for food, they're having the discussions, and they're trying to court the guy. You know the ones when you're trying to move to somebody and you're like, hmm, listen, I think we should go out, get a little creams. Hmm, I think we should go to a nice restaurant, let me take you out. I think this is happening behind closed doors. I think they're trying to get close to the agent. I think they're trying to get closer to the intermediaries to make this move more realistic. What do we know about this move? We know that the move will cost around about 130 million pounds because that's what Dortmund want. Chelsea have to ward off the competition. Competition in this case are Real Madrid and Liverpool. Liverpool makes sense. Liverpool are waiting. They've been waiting after sure many rejected them to go and get Jude Bellingham. We know that for a while. But Real Madrid, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Sure many Camavinga Valverde. Where on earth are you going to stick a 130 million pound midfielder in there? Like, honestly, like, let's be realistic. Is Bellingham right now better than sure many? I don't think so. Is he better than Camavinga? I think he's the best one out of the three. Is he better than Valverde? Valverde looks amazing. Like what you want him right wing, you want him left wing, you want him right back, left back. Whatever you want, the kid can play. Center midfield, his rightful position. That guy is a monster, monstro. I am not replacing. So unless you get Bellingham and then you have four of them to fight over three positions, Raw Madrid, my hat will come off to you if I had one. So Chelsea need to be very realistic of what they do. Do I need to talk about Bellingham's qualities? He's very good on the ball. He's young to the point where he's 19 years old and he's only getting better. And he already starts for England and Dortmund in the Champions League. So the talent is there to be seen. Can he improve his shooting? 100%. But like I said, he's 19. He will improve and we just need to be patient with him. And the key thing here is Chelsea need to, when they sign him potentially, they need to have experience around him. You need to mold him. You need to give him time to develop. This is why Shuemeni and Camavinga look so good and Valverde look good. Kroos, Casemiro and Modric all were there nurturing them. In this case, now Casemiro's left, it's Camavinga or Shuemeni, but at the same time you've got the support of Luca and Tony. It makes sense. It's easy math. You just have to be there to do the arithmetic. Now we need to talk about Mr. Basmati Rice, Mr. Declan Rice, Mr. Passion Merchant Declan Rice. So. Declan Rice, in my opinion, has now earned a status of being overrated. And why do I say that? It's because people call him a hundred million pound footballer. Sorry, I don't see it. Is Declan Rice a good footballer? Very good footballer. I think as a CDM, kid is phenomenal. Like as in, as a disruptive old school CDM, he can break play up, he's combative in the air, he can impose himself, he's hard in a tackle, he's very mobile. But is he of the caliber for a possession based side? You people, statisticians, I'm going to throw all the stats at you, he gets 89% passing. Yes, but it's for a team like West Ham that don't have much of the ball. So when they do have much of the ball and teams park the bus a little bit against them, he passes it sideways, passes it backwards. People are like, yes, but he passes forwards as well on a regular basis, better than Jorginho. We see him for England. He's not better than Jorginho playing the ball forward. He's not better than Jorginho in possession. The thing is, when you play for Chelsea, you get pinpointed and man-marked. You have to receive the ball in uncomfortable areas. 
Declan Rice, the same thing that happened to Conor Gallagher is going to happen to Declan Rice. He's fundamentally not good enough on the ball. So if you want to go and spend 110 million pounds, 120 million pounds, like he's going to cost, because if Jude Bellingham goes for 130, West Ham asking for the same money. You're, in my opinion, putting money down a toilet. You're pushing that button or pushing that button. It's one of the two. If you've got a wavy toilet, it's that button. If it's you got a dead toilet, it's the one where you, you push the handle down. You know what I mean? But for me, realistically speaking, that's what you're doing. Figuratively, you're throwing money down the toilet because he is not worth 130 million pounds. I'm sorry. Like in this current market, it's crazy. The talent you're acquiring, the, you're basically buying a bit part player. Defensively, very good. Forward, nah, man, it's not for me. I'm sorry. A lot of you are going to moan about this, but Matt Law says he's on our radar. He is one player that we're going to be looking at. Now we're going to have to talk about Nkuku. And Chelsea apparently are avidly keeping an eye on the player. They want to see how he develops and they want to see whether the move is actually plausible and needs to be done. Personally, I'm very hesitant about this move. I think he's a good player. I think Bundesliga attack is a real thing. Unless you're Erling Haaland, right, who is a penalty box striker and he's coming and doing the exact same role in the Premier League, there is attacks. We saw it with Timo Werner. I don't think Nkuku is as good technically on the ball as you need to be in tight spaces to open up defenses, to have that ingenuity. Does he have the pace? And if we play to his strengths, will he suit the team? Maybe he will, maybe he won't. But I just question where in this system will he fit in? So I think this is one that Chelsea are keeping a tab on, but I don't think Chelsea are gonna go and acquire. Personally, I, I wanna know your opinions. I need to see a bit more of Nkugu before I say whether he's worth 80 million, whether he's worth the release clause of, I think, 70 million pounds. So this one, I'm gonna keep hush-hush. But then there's the Edward Mendy. Edward Mendy is a very interesting one because I personally have said it in the summer. If we could have acquired Kayla Navas and let Kepa go, I would have done it. Because Kayla Navas is good enough to give Mendy competition. And if Mendy messes up, you replace. Because Kayla Navas is a good goalkeeper. She's just a little bit old. But at the same time, he's ready to come in now. Chelsea need to be very incisive and decisive. They need to look at the short list of players they have and they need to ask, are these players better than Mendy? And are they gonna cost a fortune to come in and become number ones or are we bringing in competition? Mendy's form for the year being very shaky. Nothing was the same since the start of 2022. Nothing has been the same since he's won AFCON. His level has deteriorated. It's like he won the Champions League, won AFCON, and now started introducing mistakes into his game. I don't know what's been going, I swear, I don't know. But I think he is a good goalkeeper. I think he's going for a bad phase. I think we're trying to ask him to do stuff that he's not comfortable doing. I think this whole play out the back Mendy, I don't like it. I really don't. I think we need to stop doing it. I think we need to not stop it completely, but we need to select where it has to happen and where it doesn't have to happen. That's my opinion. Don't eat me for it. Now we need to talk about the Bowley experiment of buying clubs around the world. So Chelsea, like I reported before, and I explained to you guys, are avidly looking for clubs to buy around the world. And some guy called Tim Glick is put in charge of it. So he's looking at three countries. Country number one, Belgium. So they want to have a team within Belgium and they want to produce Belgian talents and then have a subsidiary of Chelsea basically in Belgium. Second one is in Portugal. They've got George Mendes. That's what I say it right. Very good. I said it right. George Mendes signed to look for the club. He's going to be giving them recommendations of which clubs are going to be good to acquire, which ones have good youth systems already in place. So they have to spend less money to build the ground up. And finally, they want to get a Brazilian club. There were rumors that the club was Santos. They looked to buy Santos, but apparently that got shot down straight away. That's not interested. You're gonna ask me why they wanna do it. I don't know. I think from a standpoint of the clubs acquiring new owners that are gonna invest, great news, right? Because these law are hands-on. They want to develop the clubs. But I don't know how the local fans of Santos and say, for example, Rio Ave and in Belgium, Genk, are going to feel about becoming a feeder club for Chelsea. Yes, they're going to develop their own talent. Yes, they're going to be, have an opportunity to be within the Champions League. But essentially, any good talent they have, Chelsea is going to come and pinch it. And the fee is not going to be un unreasonable. It's not like going to be a fee that you're going to reinvest into the club like a crazy. Like, for example, imagine Santos develop the next Neymar. Chelsea are going to bid 50, 60 million and take him. Like, and that would be normal. Santos can't be asking for 80, 90 million because Boli owns one club and Boli owns the other club. So that's going to be an interesting conundrum. And whether 
it will work. And then the real question is, is loaning players to those clubs, does it actually really work? But that could be a whole video in itself. In the comments below, let me know if you guys want me to discuss the multi-club system and how I envisage it working out, the positives and the negatives of it. Personally, it would be a very interesting video to make, but I want to see if the demand is there. So if you guys want to see it in the comments below, let me know. Just put multi-club system or just put a pineapple if you it literally because if you can't be bothered to type just put pineapple i'll know what you're talking about hit the like button subscribe to the channel guys we're aiming for a thousand likes make sure you share this video around and finally make sure you go and follow me on instagram in the pinned comment peace out i'm out hasta luego